Hello, everybody, and welcome to Decred Distributed, where we take a look at the Decred community across various parts of the world. Uh, today, we're going to focus on Africa. I am Dustin Lefebvre, Marketing Lead with Decred. And I'm Jake yokum uh, the Decred Project Lead. Thanks for being here, Jake. Today, we have a special guest. It's Akeen Sawyer. Uh, Akeen, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you found Decred? Sure. Um, so I was born in the United States, but I was raised in Nigeria through high school, secondary school. Um, moved back to the U.S. for my education and spent just about all my career here in the United States. And so, you know, I spent a lot of time in international development, management consulting, and working for a couple of five, Fortune 500 companies. And about seven years ago, I started looking into alternative protocols for global value transfer. I had been on the board of a mobile payments company in Sierra Leone called Splash Mobile Money. And, you know, we kept getting lots of requests from remittance companies who wanted to ride our payment rails basically to distribute, you know, cash in, in country. And so we learned quite a bit about just how the global remittance business, particularly into Sub-Saharan Africa, was extremely inefficient, um, was effectively controlled by a handful of entities. And so, you know, when cryptocurrency came around and, and blockchain protocols started proliferating, it just seemed to me like the no-brainer um, and the future of, you know, global value transfer. So that's, you know, effectively how I got into, you know, crypto uh, and, and got interest in blockchain space. And what about Decred specifically? Because most people don't start off with Decred. They sort of go down the wormhole and find it. Yeah, so, you know, along the way, you know, I'm, I'm sort of a little bit of a research um, nut to some extent. And I kept trying to figure out, you know, what, what really are the key differentiators in the blockchain space? You know, if a lot of the technology is open source, that's probably not it. Um, you know, I started following Chris Bernisky, um, who you know, speaks a lot about um, governance and why he felt governance was, you know, really one of the big differentiators long term of value accumulation in the blockchain space. And um, I remember about a year, a little bit over a year ago, they had published um, their investment thesis on Decred, which I read and, uh, you know, immediately got very interested in Decred as a community. And so I started doing just a lot of my own research at that point. And then, you know, later in the year, I reached out to you. Um, I remember we had a call and we, we talked a little bit about Decred and how one could get involved. And, and that's basically started my journey. So you have a strong background and a lot of knowledge about Africa. Why do you think Decred is going to find success in Africa? I think, I think for a number of reasons, right? I think the idea of a store of value that is immutable, that is out of the reach of the government and out of control of, you know, third parties is really appealing. Um, partly because across Africa we have, you know, extremely volatile currencies, um, many more volatile than, 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 than Bitcoin or Decred or other, you know, blockchain tokens. Um, so I think that's the first. I think, you know, just as importantly as a medium of exchange, as I, as I said prior, moving money into Africa across borders within Africa is extremely expensive. So, you know, the day of this very you know, digital medium of exchange um, that has very low friction, very low costs, is extremely appealing in and of itself. Um, and then when you think about, you know, some of the, the things we're doing at Decred with integrating Lightning Network to, to ensure just faster and even quicker transfers, uh, you know, I think that's a very, also extremely very compelling, mm -hmm. right? But beyond that, um, beyond the idea of this currency store of value or, you know, currency medium of exchange, I think I decred, you know, the, the, the big differentiator is our governance structure and system. And when we look at lots of African countries where there's just a lack of strong institutions, both public and private, this idea of a decentralized organization that has transparency in the way it's governed, that, you know, places a premium on, you know, all staker, stakeholders having a say on participating, I think is also extremely compelling. And, and when you marry that with a lot of the great infrastructure we've built, um, you know, I think it's sort of like, you know, four prongs of a table that are a very strong differentiator for Decred and I think will be extremely appealing. 
Akeen, something that you mentioned uh, that I thought was particularly interesting was the idea of uh, you know the appeal to uh, people in African nation states from a governance perspective. Something that's come up with, with conversations I've had with a number of Africans over the past several years is that it seems pretty uniform that governance is something that's a very big problem in Africa in particular. Uh, you know, in the sense that there are, you know, there's typically a, a, you know, a strongman leader, and if the strongman leader steps down, things can become very complicated for their family and for the, uh, you know, their associates. So that there's a, you know, there's sort of a benevolent, benevolent dictator for life, or sometimes less than benevolent dictator for life. So, do you feel like that feeds into the, you know, the potential draw for decred in African states? Yeah, I do. Right. So if you think about it first from a security standpoint. Right, like you said, whenever there's a change in power, you know, there's a vacuum that's typically um, created, right? And all those who have been outside of power or on the margins of power are now vying and fighting for control, right? And with, with, with new control comes, you know, a weeding out of all those who are part of the previous administration, right? So there's a huge security problem in terms of, okay, you know, the value your assets and, and issues like that. Um, but on top of that, I think even more importantly, you know, African nation states post-colonialism were really designed um, to support the Western world, right? They were designed to support the extraction of natural resources. They were designed to effectively be a global subsidy, in my view, for the rest of the world, right? If you look at commodities, if you look at just all sorts of sectors, you know, Africa is basically the place where you get resources on the cheap if you are um, a developed country, and you subsidize the cost of development of your country. And, and so given that, you know, there's no incentive for, you know, whether it's the powers that be on the ground or global powers to build strong governance systems, right? Because if you, if you give power to the people, then they're going to start asking interesting questions like, you know, imagine I'm from the DRC that has, I believe, 60% of the world's cobalt resources. You know, if they had the power to price cobalt, all of a sudden, you know, all the profitable tech firms that have, you know, cobalt or some of these rare earth metals in their phones or laptops, imagine the cost and the price of that rising. So there hasn't been any incentive, right, in my view, to have strong governance, right? And typically the MO of a lot of foreign countries is, okay, who's the leader you can prop up that effectively, you know, serves your needs? And if they then kind of develop a heart along the way and say, or some sort of nationalist view, um, it becomes a problem, right? And, and they oftentimes lose the support of, you know, the entities backing them externally. So all that to say, you know, governance hasn't been something most Africans in the current generation or even the previous generation have, have really had access to, right? So I think it's a massive opportunity now to be able to align you know, your store of value, your means of exchange, and a say in how basically that economy is run, um, you know, it's something most Africans really haven't had the power to, to, to be involved in. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, you know, Decred has the ability to, to give Africans sovereignty and their money and also level the playing field of, of the financial system, which probably, you know, they, they feel hasn't been fair to this point. So I think it's, it's really interesting there. Um, can you talk about Akeen? Uh, some of the different markets within Africa and, and how you develop a strategy, you know, to prioritize and, and set about building communities across the continent. Um, and so the way I kind of think about it is, you know, at the core of a strategy is awareness, right? People need to know we exist, what we're about, why we're important or different. And, you know, I think along with that, you know, you sort of want to go to the largest markets. And Nigeria is the largest, largest economy in Africa. Um, you know, Nigeria absorbs about 60% of all the remittances that come into Africa, into sub-Saharan Africa. 60%? That gives you a little, yeah, 60% of the whole just of sub-Saharan Africa remittances just in Nigeria. And that's, and those are World Bank figures, right? Um, and so that gives you a little bit of a sense of how large the market opportunity is. Um, and, and, Akeem, and then, do you think, do you think that global remittances is going to be the number one application for cryptocurrency within Africa? Uh, in the short to medium term, yes, yeah. um, because you know Sub-Saharan Africa is also the most expensive corridor in the world for moving, you know, remittances, right? So about 10% of 
you know, what's estimate, estimated to be between 40 and $60 billion of global remittances goes to fees, right? And if you think about, you know, I mean, for example, if Nigeria is, you know, I don't know, 20 to 30 to 40 billion of that amount, you know, that amount of money is larger than what the government spends in Nigeria, right? It's, it's larger than effectively, you know, government, the government budget, which is funded by oil and gas money, revenue. And, and so if you think about the quantum of what that means and the level of influence that can have in the country, um, it's, it's substantial. And I think to some extent in many other countries, particularly countries that have a history of recent conflict, you know, a lot of people depend on people sending money home, similar to what's going on in Venezuela, where, you know, for, for many people, their lifeline today is their ability to receive crypto from abroad. Right. So a, a lot of community building happens face to face, Akeen. Um, do you plan on making trips to Africa? How, how do you plan on finding local community leaders to, to kind of, you know, do the, the work on the, you know, feet on the ground? Yeah, so I think it's, you know, really starting with leveraging the current team we have on the ground. I think there's, there's nothing better than that. Um, I think with, with the awareness goals, it's really to first and foremost build our awareness around developer communities because, you know, I think that's one community that we need to build a certain level of understanding of how they can participate, one, in the community, right, and, and add value to Decred, but also how they can build solutions on top of the infrastructure we have. You know, I think Nigeria's, Nigerian developers are the fastest growing community on GitHub, for example. Uh, so there's a large appeal and, and you know, we, we have the, one of the youngest countries in the world, over 40 million young people um, who are, you know, around the ages of 18 to 24. I mean, that's a massive potential workforce that really has very little to do or very little opportunities. And so in my view, it's, you know, how do we harness one, the power of this developer communities, how do we begin to raise leaders, right, amongst that group who can then, you know, bring up the next generation, right? So it's really about providing them with not just information, but over time resources to be able to scale. Um, and so for me, you know, it's kind of a two pronged uh, view. It's I need to have some more presence on the ground, which I'll do um, going forward. But a lot of the goal for that would be to really empower and build capacity within the folks locally so they can have some level of you know independence and you know we're really trying to build a decentralized mm -hmm. system so you know that would be the goal. Akina I understand that uh, the, lo the local community of devs actually coordinated an event present recently can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah so I, I, I worked with our team on the ground to get us to co-sponsor and participate in a blockchain um, an AI conference that was on the 24th of May. And so I think that was one of our first, you know, big forays into, you know, a, a conference and an event. Um, I think that went really well. I mean, I think it was it sort of built a lot of confidence on my end that we had just a really strong team on the ground that could execute. You know, I just kind of gave them support in, in ways that I could, but they really owned this, right? And so um, from, from all feedback I received and all the things I observed, you know, they made a lot of inroads. Um, in terms of potential relationships with ecosystem partners that would be strategic for us and beginning to now have the conversations with their peers in the dev community to say, hey, you know what, there's something interesting going on here over in Decred that you guys should really be um, mindful of and, and, and figure out how you want to participate. It's been really fascinating learning about Decred in Africa, the dev community and, and all the different you know, community building stuff that's going on. Um, Akeen, thanks for joining us. From Thanks. Yep. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Take care. Thanks for joining us, everybody. This has been Decred Distributed.